All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are locked for the finals of the Men's Open for the Arnold Classic 2024 South America. If you guys are new here, welcome to EP09 Bodybuilding. I appreciate all you guys being here. We go live for all these events when we absolutely can and the streams are free. <laughs> but we'll go live. We're going to go live all year long for these events, you guys. Thank you again for being here. If you guys tuned in for the prejudging, we saw an absolutely ridiculous battle between Tony O'Burton, Raphael Brandau, and Good Vito. And this was a really, really interesting battle, you guys, because I honestly was not expecting Good Vito to show up as good as he did. He showed up in arguably better conditioning than... Even Rafa, well, not arguably better conditioning than Raphael. He was absolutely more conditioned than Raphael Brandau. I think he was actually a little bit more conditioned than even Tony O'Burton. But Tony O'Burton showed up in excellent, excellent shape. We did see a lot of separation from Tony O, especially from the back. The back shots definitely went to Tony O in the prejudging. It was absolutely fantastic, the package that he brought to this stage. Now... Raphael Brandau was a little bit disappointing, and that was something that I was somewhat expecting going into the show. I did not think that we were going to see the same version of Raphael Brandau that we saw at the Arnold Classic Ohio, which was a comparable version, really, to what we would expect someone to be able to do standing next to someone like Samson Dowda, because he was trading shots with Samson quite handily, quite handily, I have to say. Here at the Arnold Brazil, we just did not see that same level from, uh, from Raphael, unfortunately. But we are going to see the finals, and with a little bit of time for these guys to improve. We have, we have a little bit of time for these guys to get in a meal, especially like Good Vito. Another meal or two could make all the difference for Good Vito to really fill out, because he was a little bit flat. The most conditioned guy on stage but just a little bit flat. So let's get into some of the comments that you guys have here after the pre-judging. You guys let me know in the comments who you had winning after the pre-judging and how do you think things are uh, going to go here tonight. So uh, Leo Aris, welcome back. Uh, Low-key Raphael has more room to improve and the width and height difference is still important for uh, advantage for Raphael versus Tonio. It is close though, but Tonio winning is still an upset in my opinion. I do agree that Tonio not having near the height that Raphael has in this lineup is a little bit of a disadvantage for him. I absolutely agree. Um, do I think it's as substantial of a disadvantage as if uh, say Tonio was not in shape? He is. So that does negate that to a degree. Tonio not being the biggest guy to begin with, it definitely doesn't help though. And actually, good veto is taller than what I kind of expected. Because we really had nothing to compare Good Vito to up to this point. He has never stood on a pro stage before. This is his pro debut, you guys. And he did not disappoint. I have to say, for a pro debut, <laughs> we've definitely seen worse. We'll say that for sure. At least, at, at the very least, we'll say that. He's very well conditioned, no question. Chris Aceto in his corner. He's going to continue to get better. As far as I'm concerned, he has delivered on the hype. And make no mistake, Good Vito is fighting for top two here at the Arnold Classic Brazil. Uh, let's get into some comments. Mark Lou, Rafa can win if he comes in drier. Vito can win if he's fuller. Tonio can also win it too. So that's interesting, actually. You think Rafael can win if he comes in drier, and Good Vito can win if he comes in fuller. Tonio doesn't really need to do anything, I guess. You guys let me know. Do you think that there's a scenario where uh, Raphael can win or Good Vito can win going into the finals? These guys would have had roughly five to six hours to make any necessary changes that they feel. It's not a lot of time, but we know that things can change very quickly on stage when it comes to physiques. So we'll see what they can do with a few hours difference. Davey Addict, welcome back. Uh, back shots to Tonio all the way. I got Vito on the abs and thighs in, in the front double. The front double, I think, Good Vito did look really good there. It's the quad separation for Good Vito that really won him those shots. He had fantastic quad separation, more than anybody else on that stage. He was very impressive there, so I agree. Abs and thigh, 
I would probably give to Tonio just because that midsection is so streamlined, the abs are so defined. I would probably have to give that to Tonio. Oh, let, let me know if uh, the sound quality is okay for you guys here as well, just to, just to be sure. I made some adjustments at the uh, prejudging. I think it's pretty good now. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, Leo Ayers, if Tonio was a short guy uh, with width like Hadi or Derek, it wouldn't matter, but genetics matter. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know uh, how much taller Tonio is as compared to Hadi or Derek, but, uh, you know, Tonio's not an overly tall guy. We'll see when he stands next to Nick. I, I, I'm pretty sure Tonio told me on the last podcast that we did together that he was a comparable height to Nick. You know, Nick's not the tallest guy out there, so... <clears throat> yeah, really, really interesting show, though, so far. Fasting, feasting, beasting. Who are all these fellas? There should only be one division men's open like the golden days. That's definitely a common opinion amongst bodybuilding fans. There are a lot of divisions out there that take up a lot of time that a lot of us are just not interested in. But with that being said, all the respect in the world to all these other divisions, absolutely. Do I think that at least some shows could have the other divisions on separate days? Yeah, I think there's potential for that. Oh, Lori. Hey, how's it going, Lori? Uh, Lori says, hey, Kenson, Kareth and I are watching. Kareth Bajo, ladies and gentlemen, and his uh, his lovely life, uh, Worry. Uh, lovely life, Worry. That'll tell you how long I've been working this week. <laughs> his lovely wife, Lori. <laughs> That's great. Glad you guys are tuning in. Uh, Kareth, let me know if you're going to come on the, uh, the bodybuilding breakdown there tomorrow. We can break down the show. I think Robin said he was looking to join us. And I'm going to... Try and get Tonio if he's not too busy or wiped out or, you know, whatever. We're, we'll get him on for one of the next ones for sure. Uh, Leo Eris, I don't hate that the other divisions exist. I just prefer men's open the most. Yeah, that's how most of us are, you know, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the uh, the competitions. But, you know, this show has gone, I think, at a pretty good pace overall. And if all the shows kept this up, I have no problem with the other divisions honestly being in there. In fact, I think I gain more of an appreciation with every live stream that I do for all the other divisions. This one, I think that they are, like I said, running it pretty well, you know, when it comes to time. It's not uh, an insane amount of competitors. Maybe that's part of what it takes is simply not having an exuberant amount of competitors. Um, but uh, yeah, really for me, it comes down to open classic 212, you know, that's where that's where I typically live. Men's physique, I always mention, you know, Hart McGrath on YouTube. I do have more of an appreciation for men's physique, especially these days, partly because of Hart McGrath, especially if you guys check out IFBB Pro Dan. Like, you just, <laughs> some of the physiques you guys are just undeniable, you know, in, uh, in men's physique. Am I going to follow it or cover it on a regular basis? No. But I do have, like I said, more of an appreciation. If it's on, I'm cool. I'm cool. But we are going to be looking at the men's finals here very soon. They're just doing the awards for, I believe, this is bikini. Uh, no, sorry, f uh, women's physique. Um, not 100% sure. I think it's wellness. But um, this this must be women's physique. <sighs> anyway, Davey Addict, uh, I don't get the women's divisions, though. They're all blend together, and it's confusing. You know, I find that the more that I watch... The uh, the more that I see differences between, you know, bikini and physique and bodybuilding, uh, wellness for sure. Um, I think that, to be honest with you, they could axe bikini because I just don't think that it brings a level of conditioning that is substantiated to be on a pro bodybuilding stage. I think that the bikini girls should go to physique. Uh, you know, just a little bit more muscle and a little bit more conditioning, and then you will see, I think, physiques that at least are dialed in enough to be, you know, compared against each other on a, uh, on a pro level. That's, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Uh, but uh, like I said, these are this, the, uh, the awards for the uh, women's divisions, and it will be coming up here for the men's open finals very shortly. And again, you guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think? 
who did you have winning after prejudging? Because I've seen a lot of mixed comments as to who is actually going to win this show. I've seen everything from Good Vito for certain reasons, Rafa for certain reasons, Tonio for certain reasons. So this is a really, really close show in that sense. It really comes down to, I think, what the judges are going to have their own opinions on. If you want to go with conditioning, you can go with Good Vito. If you want to go with an overall package, you can go with Tony O'Burton. This is the bikini division. Very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, her disposition. Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to go with uh, the uh, overall aesthetic physique, fullness, roundness, with uh, a decent amount of conditioning, you could go with Raphael Brandau. I will say that the HD pictures and footage did show more detail in Raphael than what we're seeing here in the live stream. But with that being said, for myself, I'll let you guys know, I have Tony O'Burton winning after prejudging. I have Good Vito in second, and I have Raphael Brandau in third place. So like I said, let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, Uncertain Through says uh, Vito's lower half is unbeatable. <laughs> In this lineup, yeah, Good Vito takes home the legs win for sure. He wins in the leg department. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. When we saw him pose down with Tonio at the press conference, we saw the feathering in the quads at that point. It was a little preview, and that did translate over to the big stage. In fact, Good Vito's physique, as what many considered you know, a uh, an Instagram bodybuilder physique, really is not the case anymore. Good Vito has proven himself, I think, to a high enough level where we can have some serious confidence in him in the next show that he plans on doing. And who knows, that could be sooner than later. That certainly could be sooner than later. He's in shape now. I think that in the right lineup, he may be able to act in a pro show, especially if he can come in fuller. So who knows, you guys? Who knows? With Chris Aceto in his corner especially, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. So definitely not an Instagram bodybuilder. Sometimes that's a hard title to break. Regan Grimes had to ride that that title for quite some time, you know. Um, but good veto, I think he did overcome it here. So good for him. Uh, Davey Attic said the preview from the waist down is unreal. His conditioning is great. His conditioning was unbelievable. Unbelievable from the waist down. So good for him, man. Good for him. Black Patron says feel like Raphael lost some of his flow this show. His front double has, has looked better in the past. He was definitely overall better at the Arnold Ohio. He was, I think, showing more detail at the Arnold Ohio. I think that he was fuller at the Arnold Ohio. I do not think that uh, this is the best version of Raphael Brando that we have ever seen on a bodybuilding stage. In fact, this might be one of the least impressive packages that we've seen from Raphael in maybe a couple of years, maybe a couple of years. But like I said, the HD uh, pictures and video that I saw did look better than what we saw here on the live stream. Uh, Connie Alvarez says, wow, brother Vito second. Never happened, not here in Brazil. Maybe not, maybe not. But I think that there's at least an argument to be made based on conditioning uh, as compared to Raphael. Good Vito does have superior conditioning to him. There's no question there. Does he have superior shape? No, I don't think he does. I think that Raphael has superior shape in the front, in the back, in the... Well, the side... Good Vito, I think, arguably could win the side shots against Raphael, you know? Even with... Uh, even where he may not have as nice of shape as, as Raphael does in the other shots. Uh, the girl in the red that's handing out the trophies and bags is time. <laughs> yeah, Davey, we were saying before, you got to go do some socializing, bro. So, <laughs> oh man, it's good. It's good. <laughs> no, I love you, dude. Uh, Leo Aris says, Arnold Ohio version wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have slammed the door. The door is open for sure. Yep. Definitely left the door open here. And in front of a home crowd, you know, in front of a home crowd. So, little bit surprising coming from Raphael Brandau. I had a sneaking suspicion looking at some of the updates going into the show 
But now we know that this is not the best version of Raphael Brandau that we have ever seen, especially in the lower body and the back shots. There was no separation whatsoever, almost non-existent in the hamstrings and glutes. Not his best look. Upper body, not bad. Compare, I think you can make an argument of being comparable uh, to uh, Tony Burton potentially, but he did not have that lower half in any shape or form. No separation. Really unfortunate. Connie Alvarez has predictions here. Antonio first, Rafa second, Vito third, and uh, Rafa still good, uh, still too good from behind. Like I just said, there was no separation that we could see in Rafael Brandau from behind at prejudging. Not near what it needed to be. Uh, Leo Aris says Vito's shape is still decent and he has great freak factor. Now that's something that we didn't talk about, I don't think, a whole lot, is the freak factor of good Vito. He does have that freak factor, and that does make a difference when it comes to these open shows. I mean, it's a muscle contest at the end of the day. So that should work in his favor as compared to, you'll say, a quote-unquote smaller competitor like Tony O'Burton. I think that Raphael is certainly not a mass monster by any stretch. He's not considered a freak, but... I don't think that he lacks size necessarily. I still think that he could use more overall size, but I wouldn't say that he's overall lacking. And maybe some of that is because he just has such fantastic proportions. That that could be part of it. But again, you guys, we're going to be coming up to the men's open finals in open bodybuilding at the Arnold Classic South America here very soon, very soon. Uh, Francisco Porcari, Vito lacks muscle maturity and a bit of size in the chest, delts, and triceps. Bit of size in the chest, delts, and triceps. Yeah, when you have a physique like good Vito's and you're expected to have that muscularity as being, you know, a freak in the, in the sport, you really do have to bring that size. I don't think that he's necessarily lacking in the chest, delts, and triceps. I just think that he was missing some fullness. I think he was missing some fullness. I mean, could you really see a guy like Good Vito getting any bigger? I think depth in the back is something that he definitely needs to bring up. Um, maybe a bit of width, but uh, size-wise, I mean, he certainly wouldn't. Uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt him to have any more size as long as he can keep that midsection in check. But uh, no, Good Vito, he uh, he he's missing some fullness. I feel. Uh, Davey Attic says, I hope they do surprise us and give it to Tonio. He's so good. Muscle Machine says, Tonio. I don't, I won't be surprised. I won't be surprised. Tonio is bringing a level of conditioning and a level of hardness that we're not seeing. Well, conditioning wise, we are seeing it from good Vito, but it's the overall package for me. Tonio nailed it from top to bottom. The aesthetics, the flow, especially those back shots, like Tonio all day, man, all day. And I think his flow in the front double might win him that pose. His abs and thigh, I think he would be the winner in that. Now, the muscular, I would give to good Vito. I I absolutely would. Maybe even the side chest. His side leg was crazy, crazy detail in that side chest. Uh... Leo Aris says, I really think how Vito's muscles attach is crazy jagged yet full except the lats that's a good description i think jagged yet full Uh, even though he was lacking some fullness i i know what you mean and i think everybody else understands as well you guys are all pretty well versed in bodybuilding here Uh, and with how dry he is uh it's shown all over i love it Vito has a bright future very bright future extremely bright future and this show confirms it he is not just an instagram bodybuilder good Vito is the real deal he's definitely the real deal it's not like Michael Crizzo coming into the IFBB Pro League because he was already proven on a pro stage from winning pretty much anything you could win in the IFBB Pro, right? He didn't have to prove himself here. He did have to prove himself against the best of the best, but he did that successfully, and he's continuing to do that successfully. We're going to see the same thing from Good Vito. Now, that would be a comparison that I would like to see. Michael Crizzo 
next to Good Vito. Then we'll see who really is carrying that mass, bro. Then we'll see who's the true freak. You know what I mean? I'd probably put my money on Crizzo. <laughs> for now. For now. Uh, Francisco uh, Porcari says, It's not like Tonio has good separation in the hamstrings. He's better in the glutes. And he's smaller in the upper back. He, he definitely was more peeled in the glutes than Raphael. Definitely. His back shots are just crazy. They're just crazy. He has a crazy amount of hardness and vascularity through the back that you don't typically see. The depth, the X-frame. Tonio won the back shots, as far as I'm concerned. That hardness is just, it's freaky, man, you know? Especially for a guy that I found out, Tonio was actually only about 222.7 uh, pounds on stage tonight. That's only up 7 pounds from the Olympia. But 7 pounds in that amount of time is still very, very impressive. We're talking stage weight. You know, very impressive. Uh, Vito has a very bright future. I can't wait. I hope he keeps making the improvements. Yeah, he'll keep improving. He'll definitely keep improving. It's going to take a decently long off-season, I think, for him to really show up substantially improved, where we can really see those improvements come through. Um, but yeah, he'll continue to improve, no question. He's just got to keep that midsection in check, just like everybody else. Uh, Leo Era says, we got good veto tonight. If good veto comes in full in the future, we will see great veto. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. The mythical, amazing veto would be a treat. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Now look, I don't necessarily think that Good Vito is going to be a Mr. Olympia someday. But I do think that he can make it to the Olympia. And I think that if he continues to improve, that he could be part of that new generation of bodybuilders that could be a top five or well, top five might be ambitious, but top ten guy for sure. Top eight, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. Give him two, two years. Two years, and I think you'll see it. And I'm talking top ten at the Olympia. Uh, Francesco says, Vito better keep uh, keep his waist in check. That front lat spread is a bit Justin Rodriguez-ish. You got to watch it when it comes to the Justin Rodriguez. I'm a, I'm a big Justin Rodriguez fan, man. Look, I'm not unrealistic about Justin Rodriguez and his chances coming up like in Detroit or making it back to the Olympia stage or anything like that. But I'm a fan of Justin Rodriguez. I, I really am. I really am. He's got the best bat lat, back lat spread, you know. He can stand up there with anybody in the back lat. I, I like Justin. <laughs> I tried to get him on the channel, actually. I should try again. Uh, Stefan Artuni says the real video, the real Vito, please stand up. We might see him stand up tonight. He might fill out enough that we can see some some, some uh, substantial changes. And I don't think within six hours that he will necessarily fill over in that amount of time. He's got Chris Aceto in his corner. You know, Chris is going to tell him exactly what to do. And I do predict that we'll see a better version of good Vito here at the finals. You guys let me know what you think. Do you think we'll actually see Good Vito come in a little bit fuller? Let, let me know. Uh, I need Project Bodybuilding to do a progress report for Tonio soon. I need Project Bodybuilding to do a progress report for Tonio. I'm pretty familiar with Dylan's channel. Um, does he do a progress report in particular? He's a good guy. He's a good guy. I, uh, I had him on the channel before. He was on the bodybuilding breakdown. Uh, imagine the uproar if Vito takes second and beats out Raphael in Brazil. It could happen. It could happen. I think that there will be an absolute outcry from Brazilian fans because they are very passionate. They back their guys 110%. And we will see some controversial statements online if Vito ends up uh, winning against Rafael Brandao here in Brazil. This is in Sao Paulo, Brazil, you guys. This is Rafael Brandao's home. Does he have a home field advantage that will give him that second place? 
does he deserve second place after what we saw at prejudging as compared to the conditioning of good veto? It's kind of an apples and oranges thing, you know? Do you want to go with the guy that's most conditioned? Or do you want to go with the guy that has that real symmetry and flow with a decent amount of conditioning, you know, from the front at least? It's a very tough call. It's a very tough call. I don't think that Raphael was as confident going into this show because we did not see the updates nearly as much as we typically would from Raphael in the past. Especially at the press conference, he was fully, fully clothed. He would not pose down when, you know, Tonio challenged everybody on stage. Nothing. <clears throat> I go to Proud Bodybuilding Owners Hot Takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dylan's a good guy, man. He's He's got a good channel. Yeah, I like him. Uh, Francesco Porcari Vito, in my humble opinion, is bending the knees. Baby plays him too much. You're right, yeah. Shout out to Lugo. Love the reference. Uh, I see his lats lower insertions are a bit high, but I think it spoils his flow and makes him look horizontal. It does a little bit. It, it does a little bit. You're right. It does. But I do still think that that level of conditioning does put him in consideration for a top two finish here. Oh, I read that in a Marx Max muscle voice. Yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> I do that a lot. Mark will send me things uh, like when we talk on Instagram and uh, I'll read things in his voice and then I'll be like, I read that in your voice, bro. <laughs> yeah, I do it a lot too. Iconic. Uh, Connie Alvarez says, never happened if Vito beat Rafa. That place will put a 1997 Hammerstein ballroom ECW riot. Yeah, yeah. It will be a riot. You're right. Yep. It's really going to be interesting here. And we should be getting close to the finals here for the men's Open, you guys. Now, I don't know if there's going to be anything past this point when it comes to other divisions and giving out awards and things like that. I'd imagine they'll go to finals and hopefully they'll do the awards right then and there. I don't know about the other divisions I'm not sure. I know that Classic Physique is actually tomorrow. The pre-judging for Classic is tomorrow, as well as the finals for Classic. I don't know if I'll be going live for that necessarily, but I will do a video on the uh, on the results. And um, there's some pretty legit competitors coming up for Classic. That uh, Lenovo Pro, uh, or Livinho Pro, he's going to be really, really impressive. But for now, we've got the Men's Open coming up here. And we'll see who will be taking home the win for the final Arnold Classic in 2024. It is coming up, you guys. Get in your predictions now. Let me know in the comments. And again, if you guys are new here at EP09 Bodybuilding, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you guys can get all the updates on when I fire out new videos, live streams, podcasts with all the top athletes out there, news videos, it's all here, you guys. And thank you very much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Hit me up on Instagram. You know, we'll chat there. Uh, you can find me at EP09 Bodybuilding. So, yeah, we're just awaiting the men's open now. And again, like I said, let me know your predictions before they bring everybody out. Uh, Davey Attic says, I hope they do another call out of the top three, then hand out the awards. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I think they pretty much went through all of the divisions when it came to awards at this point. So I tell you when we'll know is <laughs> now this is when we'll probably know because Arnold is not at this show, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger is not physically at this show to my knowledge. No, he definitely isn't. They'll do a video here of a montage of competitors and things that Arnold is going to say, you know, about the event and then they'll bring everybody out. So I think you're going to see that happen. Let's let's see if let's see if that prediction comes true. Let's see how let's see how well I really know these bodybuilding shows. I'm probably, I'm probably right. Sometimes they do it at the very start, but uh, they've really just been running divisions all day long. They've been running them all day. 
Oh, I should mention, uh, this stream is courtesy of Muscle Contest International. Uh, it is out on uh, the Muscle Contest International YouTube. And, uh, yeah, thanks for them for uh, this fantastic live stream. This was actually really good quality, especially for, uh, for a free stream. I'll get caught up on some comments here. We'll see another top three call out, brother, don't worry. I think we will. Yeah, I think we will. Now, if they put good veto in the center this time, I'm gonna throw a real wrench into the predictions. You know, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay strong on my predictions, though. I'm gonna stay strong. Uh, Leo Era says I'm watching this during my gym session. Feels right to be here watching the show. Absolutely, I I absolutely agree. I do that quite often, actually. Well, I, I guess I should say I used to do that a lot. Before I was uh, before I was doing these live streams, I would do that all the time. I would tune into Xavier's channel when I would go and hit up my gym, and I would watch his live stream. I'd be in the comments between us, even admittedly, you know, when the shows come around. Absolutely, you guys, absolutely. So yeah, hats off, uh, hats off to you, Leo Aris, man. Hats off. Also, really enjoying your coverage. Definitely, will be following your content more from now on. Thank you very much. Hey, I appreciate you being here. I really do. I don't think that was the little video montage that I was speaking of. This could be it here. I don't know. Um, they may have somebody come out and actually say a few words as well before the men's open actually take the stage. I'm going to see if I can pick up on any audio before they get started here. Not a bad stage either, I have to say. The backdrop was fairly appropriate when it came to showcasing the physiques of these competitors in the best light. I, I, I didn't mind it. I, I really didn't mind it. Let's see if I can find it here. Maybe this is the montage that uh, I'm expecting. It's probably coming up. Uh, I think Raphael takes it. Uh, Tonio can win. Vito solid third. Yep, I, I can see where you're coming from. Yep, I certainly can. I certainly can. And that won't surprise me. That won't surprise me at all. Uh, Lori. Lori says, uh, I, think that was, uh, I think that was the amateur show. They all received pro cards. Okay. Okay. They did, uh, I think there was seven pro cards that were handed out at, the, at this show. Yeah, I think it was seven altogether. So that's a that's a decent level. And some of the amateur competitors didn't look too bad. You know, didn't look too bad from what I saw. I, I didn't see a lot of it. But from what I saw, yeah, good good competitors. Uh, uncertain through. So glad for the free or live stream now. Yeah, me too. You know, I hope other shows follow in uh, footsteps of, uh, of these. I really like how this is a Muscle Contest International show and they're making it live because this is not the only show that Muscle Contest International puts on, obviously. Will they continue this trend of free live streams move forward? I really hope they do. Because otherwise, we're going to be subject to me watching the show and pulling screenshots and putting them up for you guys. If it's a paid stream, that's what we'll have to do. But we've now got three shows in a row that we were able to bring to you guys like this. It's fantastic. So I was correct about somebody coming up to say a few words. We'll see if they do the little video montage that I was predicting. More than likely they will. Uh, glad to see new pros. Absolutely, me too. I am. Uh, the CGI video thing kind of sucks. It's not the worst thing out there. At least it's a darker background for the most part. I will say that. Uh, here we have uh, Tamer El Gindi, the brother of Tarek El Gindi. Um, Tamer is the uh, head promoter of this event. So, as I expected, they'll have a few words to say from some of the uh, larger names surrounding this event. 
we need the Olympia to do a live stream now for free too. I don't think we'll ever see that. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever see a free live stream from the Olympia, unfortunately. I think that the Olympia is a business and well, I mean, they're all they're all businesses here. This these events have to make money. The fact that they can do these live streams for free, I think is fantastic. I do think that live streams can be done at a minimal cost, at a minimal cost, and I do think that it benefits the events altogether when it comes to having these streams live. For the amount of money that they may make off of the live stream, I think that what they would gain in fans from it being free could be more beneficial than the money that they may make from really the hardcore fans that are tuning in when it comes to paying for these live streams. Because every bodybuilding fan is not going to pay 50 or $60 per stream for a show. I mean, add that up over, you know, 15, 20 shows every year. You're just not going to see it, you know? The hardcore fans will, but you're not going to see it otherwise. Absolutely not. Uh... Connie Alvarez, you probably don't get much gym time anymore with the diving, do you, brother? Let me tell you, Connie, diving is training. <laughs> diving, diving is training. But for what I do, uh, for those of you who don't know, I own and operate a commercial diving company here uh, in Nova Scotia in the North Atlantic. What we do on a regular basis requires us to wear 100 pounds of gear on average every time we go in the water. And... Uh, Yes. Oh, thanks, buddy. Thanks, dude. Hey, now, here you guys go. My boy just came home, and he brought me treats. Reese is being my favorite. Thanks, buddy. I'm live right now. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. I'm going to... I'm. <laughs> You're going to have one? You, you go ahead and have one, bud. Save me the calories. This is my uh, six-year-old boy. For those of you that are new here, sometimes my boy pops in. We also have a gaming channel uh, called Our Host Rules Gaming. You guys can subscribe to that channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for bringing those for me, buddy. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is a this is a family event. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, when it comes to diving, on average, this week, I spent two and a half hours in the water every day. Um, one day I had to do multiple dives where I did four hours and three minutes in the water and I'm not just sitting there, you know, doing inspections or whatever like that. What we're doing is concrete construction. We're running pneumatic drills. We're drilling concrete. We're installing rebar, epoxy, putting in concrete forms. It's, it's hard work on average every hour. I think I burn maybe 400 calories and that's no exaggeration. So yeah, without, uh, with, on days that I dive, I actually physically cannot train because of the amount of nitrogen that builds up in my tissues. If I am to train after I dive, I could release that nitrogen into my system and actually end up with potential problems like decompression illnesses or even embolisms. Now, embolisms are more likely shortly after you dive. But anyway, I train in order to be an effective diver as well as I've always trained for muscle. So, yeah, I, I, a lot of people may not realize that, but I actually own a commercial diving company, and that's what we do on a regular basis. Um, but, hey, I get my gym time in. That's part of why I built a gym in my house. When I can get it in, I get it in. I love my gym, too. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I hope this trend... Uh, Leo Era says, I hope this trend of more accessible bodybuilding continues. It's been great content from the community. It has been. I really hope it continues as well. And I think that we're seeing more of a trend of that in the early parts of the season. We'll see if it continues with the other shows. Because I think live streams can be done at a fairly reasonable cost. I don't think that it has to be anything overly expensive with technology these days, the way it exists. I mean, what do you really need? A decent camera, a decent mic setup, somebody to stand behind the camera, you know, and... Uh, you don't really need much. That might be oversimplifying it. But I think that in the grand scheme of costs for these shows, especially versus what they get back when it comes to accessibility for the fans worldwide, 
it's something that should be considered. It's something that should be considered. Obviously, the Arnolds are seeing the benefit for that. So I think the rest of the shows could follow suit and potentially see more growth out of their audience on a global scale. You know, get the data. See see what it turns out to be. Uh, Davey Attic says, I'd love to see the Olympia be on ESPN or something to get it out there. Yeah, who wouldn't? That would be fantastic. I don't know if it's something that we're going to see in the near future. I don't know if we'll see it in our lifetime. It's always been a niche sport. And I think it's going to stay there, honestly. But a lot of bodybuilding fans, the hardcore fans, that's where they want it to stay. A lot of the hardcore fans want it to be, you know, that uh, that niche sport. It's not something that you see every day. That's, I guess, part of why I enjoy it now that I think about it. But yeah, do I want to see it be more mainstream? I'd like to see the athletes benefit from it being more mainstream. You know, that's what I'd really like to see. <clears throat> and I think it's got potential to at least be a little bit more mainstream. Uh, Francesco Ferrari, Mr. O is, badly, is a badly run show, worse lighting, bad schedule management. So what I can say about that is that uh, their new owner, um, Jake Wood, is no slouch when it comes to bodybuilding promotion. He did the Wings of Strength shows for a number of years. He is familiar with running bodybuilding competitions. And Dan Solomon, the Chief Olympia officer, is a fantastic promoter. He's, he's a fantastic person to have to run that event. Do I think that they need to make improvements? Yes. Are they open to those improvements? Yes. But I do think this year... They do need to deliver. The 2022 Olympia was kind of a, a bit of a growing pain for Jake Wood there because it is a bigger event than the Wings of Strength show. Absolutely, right? They did it once. It was okay. 2023, I don't think was much better in terms of overall quality, especially lighting. No question there. Just like athletes really need to continue to prove themselves, the Olympia really needs to hit it this year because the Arnold left big shoes to be filled. Big shoes. You know, the Arnold nailed it this year. The prize money, the quality, the lighting, the lineup, everything. The Olympia does need to make sure they deliver this year. But I think they can. They're going back to Las Vegas this year, right? That's going to make a difference, I think. So we'll see. Uh, the family time makes me smile. It's a family event. Yeah, this is this is what I do, you guys. You know, this is what I do. Uh you know, I've got a business outside of this that I run. I've got family. I've got kids. I've got three dogs. My wife. This this is what I do, you know. Um, Connie Alvarez, you're a fucking boss, brother. Water is my kryptonite. Yeah, Kareth says the same thing. Uh, <laughs> Kareth Bajo says the same thing. Says you'll never get him in the water. Maybe. Maybe someday. Probably not. <laughs> uh, Leo Ares says, I don't appreciate the implications of it being mainstream but i think your point about the athletes benefiting is spot on i hope the athletes continue to get more from the sport that's what really needs to happen that's what really needs to happen you know these guys are supposed to be the top level athletes in the world and if you look at other sports where their athletes at the very top are benefiting especially monetarily there's no comparison. You know, the gap is is substantial. Now, for mainstream sports out there, there's more money involved. There's more sponsors involved. There's more fans involved. The, that plays a big part of it. Absolutely it does. But it's not like there's no money in bodybuilding. You know, these supplement companies are worldwide. They have a ton of money. Bodybuilders have to be creative when it comes to their income, and a lot of them do well these days, but I do think that there's still more work to do. Uh, let's see. Black Patron, uh, I feel like he's a slouch who puts up a $100 pay-per-view. The Vancouver Pro did. <laughs> uh, sorry. Kareth says jacuzzis only. Yeah, I, I look, I hear you, dude. I hear you. All right, I hear you. <laughs> That's funny. Here's Bajo in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Fourth place at the 2023 Olympia and 
12 division and only about six weeks out from the New York Pro defending his New York Pro title and a regular contributor on the bodybuilding breakdown, I will say. Great to have you here, Kareth, brother. Always enjoy our chats and uh, let me know if you can hit it up tomorrow. If not, we'll get it again later in the week. Uh, Leo Aris says, uh, the Olympia is mediocre outside of its pedigree. It must do better on a uh, I do not think that there are many excuses. It's clear to me it's going to advertising heavy, and that's uh, decidedly bad. Look, I don't want to sit here and say that the Olympia is doing things wrong. What I want to say is that I think that they need to do things better. I was disappointed in the way that the 2022 show was run, and so were the athletes. You guys maybe saw my interview with Tony O'Burton and with Charles Griffin. All of them say the same thing. It could have been run better. You know, it could have been run better, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to cast any, you know, bad light on the biggest bodybuilding competition in the world. But like I said, I do think that they need to do better this year, or it is going to start to affect them more so than it has in the past when it comes to being the premier event in bodybuilding. They need to really hit it this year with the lighting, with the backdrop, with the timing, just nail those things. Just nail those things. And the live stream, of course. But that's that's where I'm at. Uh, Mr. Manuel says, good night from Spain. Good night, brother. Thanks for being here. All right. So, we are very close, I think, you guys, to the finals in bodybuilding. In the open division here. Very close. Uh, Kali Alvarez seconds to... Well, there you go. There you go. Seconds to Jacuzzi. <laughs> Can hang out with Kareth. Kareth had to re-qualify. I guess it's top three only re-qualify across all divisions. Yeah, that's what it is now. Yeah, it's top three. Uh, Kareth is going to get his uh, qualification. There's going to be no question there. Uh, you guys make sure you go follow Kareth Bajo on Instagram and on YouTube. Uh, Kareth had to recall. Yeah. Uh, he's going to smoke these dudes at the New York Pro. Only competition would be Angel, and he's doing the Open. I don't see anybody defeating Kareth right now at the New York Pro in the 212. No. I don't think anybody's going to be able to do it. It's really the difference between, you know, what we're seeing in the Open from Nick Walker to everybody else as far as I'm concerned. Kareth is going to take it in the 212. Yeah, I think so. And I was correct about the video montage. My prediction came true. But after this, guys, we will see the men's open on stage. And uh, like I said, get in your top three here. Let me know. Let me know. Uh, Kareth got fourth place, if I'm not... Yeah, Kareth did get fourth, but I've been very vocal about the fact that Kareth should not have taken fourth place. Kareth should have taken third. That is not because he's a friend of mine. It's because he did have the physique worthy of third place. I'll leave it at that. Oh, Brandon Curry. They actually have Brandon Curry at this event. That's cool. That's cool. That's awesome. And the first bit of English that I heard this uh, stream as well. <laughs> no, fantastic. I wonder if we'll see Brandon back at the Olympia this year. I haven't heard that he's retired, but, uh, you know, I think he is staying in shape, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Kareth says, we're definitely going to handle business. Yeah, I know you are. Yeah, I know you are. Uh, Francesco Porcari says, Kareth should have placed third. Kareth should have placed third. Like I said, that's my very firm stance. Very firm stance. Uh, Lori, uh, Lori, uh, you know, Lori, you're going to have to let me know how to actually pronounce your last name for, for Gar Garofalo or Gar I, I don't want to mispronounce it, and I apologize. L let, let me know. Just send me a message. Uh, everyone will notice very soon when it comes to Kareth. Everybody's going to know very soon, especially if Kareth decides to dabble in the open. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. 
Uh, speaking of Brandon, I hope he is on this year if he competes. Yeah, I hope so too. I want to see a version of Brandon Curry that we've seen, like from, you know, the Arnold Classic. Uh, uh, what year was it that he won? I can't remember now, but that version of 2019, 2018, whatever it was. Yeah, I want to see that version of Brandon Curry again, you know, with that really, really deep uh, separation in the quads and the fullness in the upper body. I, I want to see it. I don't think Brandon has had bad showings, but I want to see 100% Brandon Curry. Uh, Connie Alfred says, I agree 150%. Kareth got fucked. I'm not a fan of Angel's midsection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that Angel is better suited for the open anyway. I don't think that he's representative of a physique that is well suited for 212. Uh, Mr. Manuel says, I'm an Angel Calderon supporter, but I gotta say that Kareth was insane. He could have gotten third. Yeah. Definitely, you know, definitely. All right, guys, we should be getting very close to the men's open taking the stage here. Very close. Hopefully we're going to see it here soon. Uh, 2019 Arnold Classic, Brandon Curry. That's what it was. Yeah, thank you. Leo, Leo Aris, thank you. Insanity is the word, brother. Insanity is the word. He was fantastic at that show. Uh. They have somebody taking the stage here, and I have no idea who this person is. You guys let me know in the comments who this guy is. Am I overlooking someone important in the fitness industry? I <laughs> I don't know. Let me know, because I have no idea who this is. I definitely want to get onto the show here soon. Uh, Peems Max says, I bought his chops to motivate him. He could train his legs like Coleman used to in the bucket squats and the Coleman parking lot lunges. I'd like to see that. Even lunges on back day would grow the quads. Curry could still win. If he brings up the legs, Brandon Curry can definitely still do some damage out there in the open. 100%. 100%. Oh, is that Joseph Bania? Kareth Bajo. Thank you, sir. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger's son, Joseph Bania. I was massively overlooking someone here. And I wasn't listening to the commentary because it's really not much of it in English. Okay, you know what? That's cool. Who the fuck is this guy? Conor McGregor. Yeah. Who the fuck is this guy? Kenson Jardine, EP09. <laughs> That's Joseph Bania, yeah. Okay, so Arnold's going to say a few words here. Yeah, I got I got it now. Yeah, that was uh, that was Joseph Bania. It'll be interesting to see if he stands on stage one of these days. He does kind of look like his father. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh Brandon will never bring up his legs. He's 42. It's unlikely. It's unlikely that Brandon will bring up his legs. But um I'd like to see it, you know, I would. So I do know who this guy is. Yeah, I do. I, I just didn't recognize him right away. <laughs> Not right away. I'm used to seeing gym pictures of him, I guess. Uh, but I did massively overlook someone in uh, the fitness industry. Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. My apologies. <laughs> My apologies. Let's see him on stage for real soon, huh? I would say we're getting close. Maybe one more video montage won't surprise me necessarily. But we should be rolling right into the men's open here soon, you guys. We should be rolling right into it. Uh, we don't talk enough about Florida. He's using some oil and it isn't penalized. Well, he didn't win last year. You know, he didn't win last year. I think that Keon Pearson is going to come in at his best as well. I think a guy like even Kareth is looking much improved. And he has that muscle hardness and density and that overall flow 
that is being awarded more and more in bodybuilding. So don't be surprised if Sean really isn't on again this year. Come up. I don't know, man. And he's not a young guy anymore either. You know, Sean is, uh, Sean is getting up there too. Not that that necessarily matters as much, but, um, do I think Kareth has a chance to, uh, you know, slip past him? Yeah. If, if Sean starts to show his age, I'll tell you right now, Kareth isn't definitely possible. I'd love to see Kareth stand next to Keon for a battle there. You know, another battle. That would be fantastic in 2024. And we are going to see it. Please bring the men's open on. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, we are getting very, very close here, I think, you guys. And I am incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. Looks like we'll have to wait a little bit more. Let's keep the chat going here. Uh, Andrew Jack and Nick Walker doing standing lunges Roman style. That's uh, nice. I love Curry, but he needs to train some old school ways, lighten up the technique down, different type of training. Maybe that's something that could benefit him. You know, I think the Brandon Curry could probably maybe hit it a little bit harder in the off season. You know, really, really hit it hard. Do that hardcore training. Go and train with uh, Psycho Fitness. You know, uh, just to do something way outside of what he typically does. I would love to see that. And I think he'd benefit from it. I think he'd definitely benefit from it. Patiently waiting? Yeah, we're all patiently waiting. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, James Mack says, uh, Dexter did the TENS unit training with squats, helped him still grow. <clears throat> so there you go. Maybe that's something that he could look into. Yeah, just a different style of training. And I do think, I do think that it's got to be really hardcore training at this point. You know, he's a seasoned competitor. He's a seasoned guy in the gym. He's going to have to do something to really shock that system, man. Really shock that system. Uh, Worth says, do you think Callum Von Moger will ever compete again? He's looking really big now. I don't know what Callum's plans are. I'm not sure. Callum kind of received his pro card um, without having a lot of competition. I don't remember what show it is that he won. But I, I don't know. I think he would have to be very good to really show up, especially after everything that he's been through with injuries and, and, you know, mental health and things like that. I don't know. I don't know if competing is in his best interest. I would like to see him continue to grow and we'll see what he looks like. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, James Mack says reverse grip, bitch, uh, reverse grip, <laughs> reverse bench grip. Oh man. It's not even that late. Reverse grip benches, uh, guys build strength and tricep size, especially, uh, inner head, easy bear, pullover press, all old school movements. Yeah. I, I did some reverse get, uh, grip benches actually. And it's great for the triceps, man. Yeah. I really enjoy them. A buddy of mine showed me those like back in 2000, 2007, I think it was. Yeah, they're, it's a great movement. Uh, Leo Era says, Abdullah always said Curry tends to come in small and makes a Lavroni-esque transformation. But he's old. Maybe he has one last push in him. Well, we saw a decent push from Lavroni himself back at, uh, which Olympia was it? Uh, it was only a few years ago. It was before COVID. Um, upper body looked great, but he was slight in the legs. And he is a guy that changed. I mean, man like that Lavroni was a marvel though in that sense I don't think that Brandon is on that level like I said I think Brandon would have to do some very hardcore leg training to really really build them up at this point in his career uh, Mr. Manuel says I hope Kareth takes Sean down I would like to see a close battle for first place remember that also Angel was second this year's a good one to two this is going to be a good year for 212 at the Olympia. This is going to be a really good year. And I've seen some other competitors coming up too. Yeah, I think 212 is in a very, very strong position right now. I think the Arnold Classic has to gear up and get 212 back as far as I'm concerned. I think taking 212 out of the, out of the equation was a mistake for bodybuilding overall. And I think they got to bring it back. You guys, let me know what you think about that. 
Uh, Leo Aris says, I hope Callum stays happy and healthy. Whatever that takes, I hope that happens. I do too. I do too. I think he's been through a lot, and he really needs to get back to a point where he is, you know, happy and healthy first and foremost. Social media is great, but social media could have been part of the problem for him to begin with. Entirely possible. Uh, Connie Alvarez says, Joseph likes to dance, not post on stage yet. Arnold's son, I mean, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. We have to see him on a bodybuilding stage. You know, we have to see it. Will he really be reminiscent of his father? That's something that the bodybuilding world, I think, really wants answered. Because he's been putting himself out there as someone who trains regularly, hitting bodybuilding poses, putting up those pictures... You guys have probably seen it just like I have. Uh, Nick Strength and Power covers him on a semi-regular basis because it's exciting to see what Arnold Schwarzenegger's son could look like. So who knows? Who knows? Someday. Uh, Mark Lou says, Sean can make improvements. Maybe he'll be like a Kamal El Gardni. I think that's possible. Sean has a lot on his plate right now. We'll say that. Sean is a relatively new father. Sean is opening up a gym very shortly. And at the same time, Sean is going to be preparing for his comeback to try and win back his title in 212. Keon Pearson, as far as I know, does not have such, I don't want to say distractions, but he doesn't have other things that require his attention in such a manner opening a new gym, or anything to do with their young children, which anybody out there as parents know how much time and dedication that takes. You know, it can be a factor. I'm not saying that it will be, because, you know, it's Sean Clarita. (laughs) But when other competitors do not have such commitments, we'll say, these can be factors that can affect even, even, even an inkling of prep at the highest level you know, as a possibility. Uh, Let's see. Brother starts stuttering when the bikini girl comes out. (laughs) Hey, man, what can we say, right? What can we say? Uh, Let's see. Connie Alvarez says, I'm still waiting to hear what show Bonac is doing. Maybe an easy show like the California Pro. California Pro is seven or eight weeks away at this point. Judging by what I've seen from William Bonac so far, I think he could be ready for California. Tonio will probably be in California. I believe Beef Stew is going to be in California. You'll probably see a fair number of competitors that compete in New York just roll into the California the next week. We might see Quint Beastwood in California. Who knows? And that's a very, very highly anticipated return to the stage. Quint Beastwood, after taking his year off, is looking fantastic. He's looking like he's brought up a lot of size. His conditioning is coming in. Matt Jansen is still coaching him, so you know that that conditioning is going to be on point. Who knows? But could Bonac do the California? It's possible. I I think he could potentially be ready for it. Yeah. Uh, Leo Era says, Keon being a younger guy with less things pulling him is a massive massive advantage. And that's what I was really trying to get at. All he has to do is eat, sleep, train. He doesn't have to eat, sleep, train kids, eat, sleep, train business. I mean, these guys are all running a business to a degree because it's their livelihood. But yeah, Keon is not going to have near the uh, near the commitments outside of bodybuilding that someone like, you know, Sean Clarita is going to have. That's absolutely true. The question is, will it be significant enough of a factor to really affect Sean Clarita when it comes to his prep? I don't know. I think his kid will probably be coming into between a year and two years old when he starts prepping for the 2024 Olympia, if I'm not mistaken. So... Kids require a lot of attention between that age, you know? I mean, you guys saw my six-year-old boy. 
you know, uh, when I finish up here, I'm going to be going out and hanging out with him, you know, that's what it takes. So they are currently doing the individual routines for the uh, wellness division as of right now. I would imagine after that, we'll be seeing the comparisons for the wellness. This must be the wellness finals. And I don't know if they will be doing the awards after that or bringing out the men's open and then doing award. I'm not exactly sure what the format is going to be, you guys. But uh, we should be seeing the men's open after we see the wellness division finish up here. Davey Attic says, let the big is here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get it done. You know, let's get it done. Like I said, all the respect in the world to the other with a question. With a question. But, uh, it's well understood. Yeah, we're 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 here to see the freak show. You know, we're here to see the we're here to see the open. Um again, with all the respect in the world for all the divisions. Uh, Connie Alvarez says, whatever show Quentin hits, they might as well mail him the trophy because he's murdering dudes. Well, Quint Beastwood is doing the New York Pro. He's going to be standing next to the likes of Nick Walker, Antonio Burton. Do you think that Quint Beastwood has what it takes to defeat either of those two competitors at this point? I don't know if you've seen the updates. You let me know. Let me know. I think he's definitely top three material any show that he walks into if not you know the winner but for new york might be tough might be tough uh black patron whatever it takes yeah whatever it takes man 100 percent. that goes for anything you know you got to do whatever it takes uh Vito looked good his color was amateur level though yeah he looked that way in his pro debut as well I think that good Vito definitely needs to work on his color. That is something that they can fix before the finals, I think. So we'll see if that is an improvement that good Vito could make. Tonio's color was fantastic. Raphael's color was fantastic as far as I'm concerned. We'll see if good Vito can fix it. Uh, Anderson Summers asks, what impact do you think Rami will make when he comes back? Top five? <sighs> Big Rami is such a wild card. And when I think about how Big Rami can do based on the last few seasons that we've seen Big Rami compete, I think that it's unlikely that we'll see him back in the top five. The big thing with Big Rami was that he was going through these stem cell treatments which is fairly common amongst the pro bodybuilders these days in terms of overall recovery and wellness. Do I think that stem cells are the miracle treatment that will re reverse muscle atrophy so substantially that it could push you back to a top five level physique? I don't think so when it comes to Big Rami. No. I think that Big Rami can continue to compete. I think that he can nail that conditioning. I think that he can definitely be better than what we saw the last couple of times he was on stage. But do I think he can get back to the top five? I don't think so. I don't. And I, and I want to see him there. I do. But I'm not confident in that, no. Uh, Leo Era says, honestly, guys like Andrew, Nick... Samson, Hottie, Derek, all possible Mr. Olympias or repeating champs are all on notice. Quinton will dominate sooner rather than later. Interesting. Interesting. He does have potential to do great things in pro bodybuilding. I think that he does have potential to be a top 10 guy. I think I need to see him on stage with some of the bigger names, which we are going to see soon to see how substantial his improvements really are in comparison to some of the big names of the sport. That's what's really going to tell us if he does have that potential to put all these top guys on notice. I'm definitely excited to see it, though. Very, very excited to see Quint Beastwood coming up. I wonder if he would come on the podcast. I should, uh, I should reach out to him. 
Not sure if uh, an HD muscle thing might be in conflict there or not. I'm going to reach out to him. Just let me know if you'd like to see uh, Quint Beastwood on the bodybuilding breakdown. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Davey Hat doesn't think that uh, Rami should come back at all. And maybe he shouldn't. Maybe Big Rami shouldn't come back at all. That's possible. I think that once you're a Mr. Olympia, anything short of being a real contender for winning that title again is not really in your best interest when it comes to continuing to compete. It's just not going to leave a lasting impression for you as a Mr. Olympia if you come in and finish, you know, sixth place after being a Mr. Olympia, especially twice. You got to know when to hang it up. And once you're a Mr. Olympia, that changes everything, man. Everything. You know, everything. Dexter Jackson, I think, is an exception because he continued to show up in really good shape. Of course, it's Dexter Jackson. So, yeah. Uh, Mr. Manuel says, is it possible that a 212 like Angel can beat Tonio? I believe some 212 guys could do better being an open. Well, Tonio was a 212 competitor not that long ago. So is it possible that someone like Angel can beat Tonio? I think Tonio is far, far superior when it comes to aesthetics. However, Angel Calderon is a mountain of muscle packed on a very small frame. I think it's unlikely that he beats Tonio at this point, though. I think it's unlikely. I just don't think that he has near the aesthetics, no matter what he brings when it comes to muscle and conditioning. Uh, Connie Alvarez says, if Nick's legs aren't improved and Quint back is improved, then Quinton can beat Nick. That's bold. Bold statement. That would put Quint be that would really put Quint Beastwood on such a massive upward trajectory. I couldn't imagine that. That's an interesting scenario. I'm actually going to have to consider that when we get closer to the show. We'll see if he actually shows us some back shots. He has shown back shots in the past. So it's possible that we could see it again. But for Quint Beastwood to defeat Nick Walker at the New York Pro, you know, you talk about turf. Well, the New York Pro actually takes place in New Jersey. Nick Walker is from New Jersey. Does that make a difference? Well, some think that it makes a difference here for Raphael Brandau being on home turf. But we'll see. We'll see. I think that there's less of that consideration in the United States of America. I don't know why I think that, but I think it's kind of less of a factor if it's home turf or not. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Mark Lou says, Big Rami should not come back. He has nothing to prove and everything to lose. That's a really good summary. Being a former Mr. Olympia, that's where you don't have anything to prove, especially winning it twice. And he does, you want to go out with a good version of yourself. You don't want to go out with a less superior version than what was presented in comparison to when you won the Olympia. Like I said, once you win that Olympia, everything changes. Everything changes. So we'll see. We'll see what he decides to do. He is a likable guy, though, so I don't know. Connie Alvarez says, yes, get Quentin on the show. I'll do my best. I'll I'll send him a message. Maybe he'll come on. I'll get him on with uh, Robin Strand. You know, Quint Beeswood should be another guy in the Canadian Beef Podcast. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, I actually have been going on the Canadian Beef Podcast regularly lately with Robin Strand, IFBB Pro, Morgan McDonald, IFBB Pro. There's a lot of great great contributors in the bodybuilding industry that are on that uh, podcast on a regular basis. Uh, Beatty Farrell, who has the, uh, he, he has his own podcast, which the name is escaping me right now. Uh, Fit, Fit Nation, Fit Nation podcast. Great podcast. There's been a lot of great bodybuilders on that podcast, and I, and I really enjoy being on there. So go check out the uh, Canadian Beef podcast as well. Uh, Leo Ara says, I'm standing on this kill. Quint could be this generation's dominant champ. Okay, give you fair due here. 
I am standing on this kill. Quint could be this generation's dominant champ. I've been following him from even before his pro debut, and his genetics are insanity. I'm a believer. He isn't uh, red this year, though, but he can qualify him. He isn't ready this year, but he could qualify. That's fair to say. He's one of those guys where he's a really big guy, just physically, you know, he's tall, and it's going to take some time to fill out that frame. But I agree. I think he can get there. I think he can qualify this year, and he definitely has the potential to be easily a top 10 guy in the Olympia within the next couple of years, for sure. Mr. Manuel says it depends on how much of an improvement Quinton has made. He has to improve a lot from 2022, and that is why he took 2023 completely off from competing. I don't think that he wasted his time. I think that especially him being in the right environment up there at uh, Pure Muscle and Fitness up in Ontario, one of the premier bodybuilding gyms in all of North America, I think that you're going to see a really good version of Quinn Beastwood. But we need to see him compared to some of the top guys. Like I said, we will see that soon. We will see it soon. James Mack says maybe his stem cell can help fix his back with when it comes to Rami. It's possible, it's possible, but I don't think that it's going to really bring back the muscle as much as maybe originally it was made out to when it comes to these treatments for Big Rami. I think it can help. I don't think it'll restore him 100%. Uh, Beastwood can't beat Nick from the back. Nick's glutes, uh, back rear double, I'll beat Beastwood. Beastwood can't beat Walker from the back. Nick is one of the best bodybuilders in the world in the back shots. I don't think that Quinn Beastwood can beat him in the back either. I don't I don't think so. I've seen the improvements in the legs from Quinn Beastwood, and they are improved. I haven't seen anything from the back in particular. But you can make a blanket statement in all of bodybuilding about that, honestly. Not just for when it comes to Quinn Beastwood, but when it comes to anybody in bodybuilding. 99.9%. Who's going to beat Nick Walker from the back? You know, Hotty, maybe. Derek, maybe. But Nick has one of the best. He, he has some of the best back shots in the world. Uh, James Mack says, Beastwood looks good. He gave Samson a nice run. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I agree. We'll see about the improvements this year. Connie Alvarez says, don't say can't, brother. This is bodybuilding and anything is possible. I never want to count anyone out necessarily. What it comes down to for me is what these guys have looked like within their last couple of showings, I feel. Not the updates on Instagram or YouTube, but what is it that they have brought to the stage in the last couple of showings? You know, that's what it comes down to for me. You might miss on one show. Okay. Do you miss on another show? Well, now it's getting to be less likely that we're really going to have confidence in you moving forward. You do it three shows. It's tough to come back from that. It's tough to come back. Uh, Quint Beastwood needs to do Paul Delette's training style. I'm not exactly sure what Paul Delette's training style was like, to be honest with you. I'm not sure. Leo Aris says, I do wish we got 2015 to 2018 Rami with his 2020 and 2021 conditioning. I feel like we didn't actually get the best Rami winning, though he deserved to win. You know, my favorite physique from Big Rami was actually the 2013 New York Pro. That was an incredible physique overall. He had the midsection, he had the quads, the flaring quads, he was full, he was round, he was conditioned. That was a very very good version of Big Rami. It was a very fresh version of Big Rami. He does look like he has spots on him at this point. He does. <clears throat> Davy Attic says, I never thought I would say this, but I'm tired of looking at asses. I think it's more that you're just waiting for the open to come through, bro. <laughs> I think you're just waiting for the open. I get you. I do. I got you. 
James Max, I love Walker. He's top shelf. His rear double is comparable to Marcus Rule. Even Crizo just gave Walker a shot about his front, his biceps. Yeah, so Crizo actually measured his arms and uh, made a comment about Nick. Uh, what division is this? This is the wellness division. When he made the comment about Nick, saying, you know, Nick can think that he has the best arms out there in bodybuilding, but Crizo really considers himself to be superior in that. And, you know, I would give the arms to Crizo. I think Crizo does have the best arms in bodybuilding right now. I think he does. <laughs> Subject vision. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Uh, Bartek uh, Simzik says, never been a fan of Rami's physique. Okay, okay. 2013 Rami was pretty undeniable, I have to say. Now, that wasn't yesterday either. That was 11 years ago you know but it was a very very good physique there's there's no question in bodybuilding standards that was a great physique from big robbie just just in general you know it was a good physique in bodybuilding <clears throat> yeah that fresh rami is some of the best yeah definitely uh fast times came over from desktop bodybuilding chat is toxic no that's too bad Xavier is the OG when it comes to bodybuilding live streams. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's a great dude. I love to even tune into his stuff sometimes. Like if I'm traveling or whatever, can't do my own. I started out listening to Xavier's uh, live streams, you know. Um, he's a good dude. He, he, he got to clean up the chat. Well, it can happen. I appreciate you being here, though, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leo Aris says, Crizo might lose raw mass, but shape matters. I prefer Crizo, but it goes either way for best arms currently. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's another comparison I should get Mark to do, actually. The current best arms in open bodybuilding. See, Mark, where, Mark, are you in the chat, brother? Are you in the chat? Because you need to be here on a regular basis to be able to get all these awesome ideas for videos, man. Not that you need them. Not that you need them. But uh, I would really like to see... Uh, I would really like to see that. That'd be a good comparison. If I had to give the arms to either competitor, like I said, I would go with Crizo. I think Crizo just has that freak factor. He has those proportions. He's just so genetically gifted in the arms, man. You know, from the front, from the side, from the back. I think Crizzle's got it. Uh, I am overpowered. Asks thoughts on Nick Walker heading into the New York Pro. I think Nick is going to win. I think that Nick is going to end up being improved from what we saw last time he took the stage. I think that Nick is feeling like he needs to redeem himself a little bit after having to drop out of the 2023 Olympia a week before. Not that he really needs to show any amount of redemption, and I don't think that he's put that out there. He really hasn't when it comes to, you know, why he's doing this show. I like the fact that he's trying to compete, and the conversation has absolutely ended about the whole special invite thing. That was not a good look for Nick Walker. I don't think that a special invite was well-suited for him. Like I said, I think he's going to win. Yeah, I think he's going to win. Uh... Let's see. Uh, I'm not. I'm not brushing over your comments about uh, Xavier's chat. Uh, I like Xavier's stuff, but I always stay away from the chat. You know, certain certain areas in bodybuilding, you just don't know what you're going to get. He doesn't have a lot of control over that, and he gets a lot of comments, so it's probably hard to filter out. Like I said, Xavier does great content. He's a great dude. He's uh, he's the man. Uh, Leo Ares says, "I got to get first comment on Marx's next video for the arm competition." Absolutely. And I will message him myself as well. I'll send him a message. Uh, Crizzo also has that crazy thin skin. Yeah, yeah, he does. And not a lot of people talk about that, actually. Crizzo does get crazy conditioned, man. Crazy. Uh, Ottawa in HD, will you be streaming Classic Physique tomorrow? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I might do the finals. I don't know if I'll get the prejudging done. Um, I'm actually hiring a new diver tomorrow. I need to meet up with him to do an orientation and uh, get him situated to start work on Monday. 
we'll see we'll see how I do when it comes to time. I would love to. Um, at the very least, I will do a uh, breakdown of the fills uh, after that finishes up. But uh, I'll do my best. I will. Looks like they're getting ready to do the uh, awards here for the Wellness Division, which means we can expect to see the men's open on right after that. Should be very close now. But we'll keep the chat going. Thanks a lot for being here again, you guys. Really appreciate it. James Mack says, Nick Walker's bicep heads are freak stats. Crizo said Nick has the best biceps. Nick will deliver. Help make Walker heal faster. Okay. Okay. I would still give Crizo the arms pretty much in general. <laughs> pretty much in general. Uh, Davey Attic says, I like both of their arms. I don't know who I prefer. I try to look at the overall, and Nick is better as a whole. As a whole, yeah. As a whole, Nick is is a better bodybuilder, I feel. But just when it comes to the arms, I just prefer Crizo. And that's a personal opinion. Nick has better bicep peaks, I'll give him that. But overall, I just prefer Crizo's arms when it comes to proportions, freak factor. You know, I think he's got it. Uh, Anderson Summers says, let's chat about Andrew Jacked. Do you think he could, he would squeeze into that top five this year? He's still a dark horse, a scary one. Yeah, I think if Andrew Jacked does make the improvements that I think he's going to make this offseason, he's definitely in contention for that top five. The only thing that Andrew Jacked has ever needed is more size. Once he puts on that size... It's game over. It's game over for everybody. He has the best midsection in bodybuilding, hands down, even better than Tonio's. You know, I will say that. He just needs the size. We've seen him conditioned. He came in ultra-conditioned to the 2022 Arnold Classic. Too conditioned, actually. If that is understood by you guys, I think you guys understand. He sacrificed a bit of size in order to bring in that conditioning when he was training with Psycho Lewis. Andrew absolutely could be a top five guy. And from the second that he hit the pro ranks here in the IFBB Pro League, he was considered to be a future Mr. Olympia. And I still think that he is as a potential. But he's got to put on that size. I will say that he is looking bigger lately. Definitely looking bigger. Davey Attic says Andrew could be great. Yeah, he absolutely could. Andrew got style. He does. He does. But he's got some pretty stiff competition in front of him, too. You know, Hottie is not going to take it lying down. Neither is Sampson. Andrew's really going to have to be substantially improved from a muscle mass standpoint. And he's really got to get that lower body condition, too. I know he's done better with it, but I think he needs more. I am overpowered, says, your top three at the Arnold Brazil. You've got Brando in first, Tony O second, good video in third. Okay, so we will be coming up to the finals here soon, you guys. Wow, she has massive, massive legs, the woman holding the trophy there. Wow. Now there's someone that should train Nick Walker when it comes to legs. <laughs> massive legs, holy shit. I got distracted for a minute there, boys. Um, sorry. Um, my top three at this show, I've got Tony O'Burton winning. I have Good Vito in second. And I actually have Raphael Brandau in third after prejudging. That's how I see it right now. Black Patron says, Andrew Jack got the best abs and thigh in the business. Yes, he does. But you can't win the Olympia with just one shot. No, you can't. No. His back shots are impressive as well. But he needs more size. He needs more size. He looks thinner compared to other bodybuilders in the front shots front by the front double and the front lat for sure side shots he needs more hamstring and he needs just more overall thick his chest is good from the side we can definitely say that with confidence but he does need more size that's what it comes down to bigger legs bigger hamstring drop bigger arms like i said comes back to them arms right you don't have them arms and it shows uh mark lou says hunter is looking huge these days Hunter is looking big. He looks very big. Hunter is someone that I think is 
may be overlooked in the pro bodybuilding ranks, even though he's finished as high as fourth at the Olympia. I think that he's still slightly underrated because his midsection is criticized so heavily by the masses. But he did make improvements to his midsection. He definitely brought the best that he could in 2023. And I was impressed by him. I was. Do I think that he can win the Olympia someday? No, I don't. But I do think that he can make his way back to that top five. But it's got to be in the right lineup as well. There's just so many other guys that are so good, you know. But Hunter is great. Uh, Anderson Summers has Brandeo, Antonio, and Vito. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I can understand that. Yep. I understand that. Leo Aris says, I worry that due to Andrew's age, it may be too late to put on the size and condition, holding out hope. Maybe. But in bodybuilding years, he doesn't have that many miles on him. He's like 38 or 39 now, I think. But he's only been competing at this level for a couple years. So that might be something that could work in his favor in terms of his ability to make improvements going into his 40s. It's, it's possible. And he's got Chris Aceto aside him when he finally does the offseason. Uh, and I think he has somebody else that he's working with now for his training, like a training coach of some sort. Uh, Andrew's abs versus Hottie's abs. Tell me your thoughts. I think Andrew has the best midsection in bodybuilding, period. Like in the open, because it's not really comparable between the men's physique guy and, and, and the open guys. I think Andrew has the best abs in the business. Hottie has a great midsection. He has great abs. But Andrew is just on another level, man. Uh, I am overpowered as Brandeo was soft from the back. His glutes and hams weren't good as compared to Arnold Ohio. No, they weren't. He was very soft in the hams and the glutes at this show. And that is going to cost him. It's definitely going to cost him. Especially given the fact that Good Vito brought such fantastic conditioning. It's going to cost him. I think that it's going to cost him the win. Third place would be a serious, serious loss for a guy like Rafael Brandau in terms of this show in particular. This is home turf for him. And especially given the fact that we just saw him stand next to guys like Samson Dowda and Hottie and really hold his own. It's going to be a disappointment. Uh, Black Patron says, if Hunter can bring his midsection and work a bit more on his posing, he could be moving up. Yep, yeah, definitely possible. Hunter did state that he's still working on the midsection. Yeah, you're not just going to fix it in one season. And he went to Charles Griffin to help him there last year, which is the perfect person to go to. Charles does not have the most aesthetically pleasing midsection, but he made it work so that it's something that doesn't take away from his physique. And that's the best that Hunter can hope for. All right, guys, they're getting ready to bring on the men's open. It's coming. We're finally, finally getting there. Very, very close now. And here we go. We're starting off, you guys, with Raphael Brandau. They're bringing him out. Or perhaps I'm just mishearing the live stream because I do not speak Portuguese. <laughs> I think they were more just saying that, uh, oh, no. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's see if Raphael has made any improvements from prejudging to the finals. I think there's a little bit more separation in the quads. I think he does look a little bit better here from the front. He looks a little bit fuller. It looks like maybe there's a little bit more sweep to the quads there, a little bit more detail. 
Maybe that muscle was just pushing against that skin just a little bit more. He may have dropped a little bit of water. Side leg looks better. I think there might be... Mm, looks about the same from the back. I'm not seeing a lot more separation in the hams and the glutes, but in the quads, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So he does look better. He does. Raphael Brandau, ladies and gentlemen, he does look better. So this will be a prime example, you guys, a prime example of uh, is he going to keep posing or is he just going to cry? Um, let's see some more poses. Yeah, yeah. You can cry when you win, bro. Actually, don't do that either. Anyway, he is a lot better here. A lot better. Is it going to be enough to take home the win? Well, the prejudging, I think, was just a little bit too lackluster to really put him up and over the top here because we may see improvements from Tonio as well. But he does look better. He definitely looks better. If this version had a showed up at prejudging, then I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've never seen a competitor start to cry halfway through their routine. I actually think that that's a detraction. The cry and thigh pose. The cry and thigh pose. I love it. I love it. No, really though, that's that's not that's not becoming as far as I'm concerned. I don't uh, I don't love that front double tears. Yeah, honest to God. Okay, okay, let's let's move on, you guys. Let's move on. We've got Tony O'Burton coming out. Now let's take a look. I think we're seeing a little bit more fullness from Tonio here. I think there's a little bit more separation in the quads. Not not as much as Raphael, but I think that there is a little bit more separation there. The back shots. Let's let's see it. Come on, straight on straight on back double. Come on, yeah. Man, that is world class. World class. Fantastic back double. Really good back lat spread. I think we're seeing more fullness in the quads from Tonio. I think he looks I think he looks fuller. Yeah, there's there's definitely more separation in those quads. Crazy shoulders, crazy, crazy round shoulders, the striations through the chest, but he still kept that tight midsection. Those abs are still defined. Tony O'Burton also improved from prejudging. Also improved. Very good. Tony O showed up to win here. Tony O did not just spend four weeks in Brazil to lose. I will tell you that right now. Now, I forgot this competitor's name. I meant to, meant to learn it. This guy's got a pretty good physique. You know, he's he's a tall guy, like I was saying before. He's a tall guy with, uh, you know, a decent level of conditioning. I think he's better than prejudging as well. Just more overall size. And, you know, he he's, he's actually pretty good. Striations through the glutes, the back is dialed in. He looks, this guy looks better. I think this guy could be fourth place. I really, I really got to know who this is. I, I can't remember his name for the life of me. Now I got to, now I got to check it. Okay. Okay. Mo moving on. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. 
Next out, they're bringing in Oviedo. Yeah, that guy did have good physique. All right, now, we're looking for more fullness from good Vito. Was he able to bring up the fullness? Still has got, he, he still has that deep level of separation in that side leg. Okay, he's going to start with some back shots here. Still hard to tell you guys. I got to see him from the front. Come on, hit a front double, dude. He is very impressive. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to see if the improvements are really there from prejudging to the finals here. I think he, I think he is a little bit fuller. I think he is a little bit fuller. Very impressive. This is a very impressive pro debut, no matter what way you slice it. Yeah, he's definitely fuller through the arms. That vacuum actually in the front double looks really good. And his posing was better. I think his posing was better from the back. He didn't hold the back double as long as I would have hoped. But I... I think I think he was better. I don't think he's substantially better as compared to Raphael, but definitely better. So there you go. Your top three, you guys, are all coming in better in only a matter of about six hours. There is no clear winner at this show as of right now. It is all going to come down to the final comparisons, and that makes for a very exciting show. Very exciting. Man, what a start to this 2024 bodybuilding season. Just incredible. Really good individual teams. Except for Raphael crying halfway through. That was kind of different. Different. Uh, what do you guys think? Vascularity and good veto. Yeah, the vacuum is great. Yeah, that front double with the vacuum was fantastic, man. Fantastic. The arms did look bigger. I agree. Uncertain through. I agree. Definitely very impressive. Dan Smith, hey, what's going on? Uh, James Mack says, uh, Vito, listen to the technician. Vito looks world class for sure. Yeah. Okay, so next is uh, Alan uh, ba Bonadamin. Bonadamin. Um, this is a tall competitor that actually made it. I believe he was in the first call out. Uh, the top five call out. Yeah, the the last guy there, he he did have horrible GH gut. And Alan needs his gyno bro in a huge way. In a huge way. That is something that does not does not offer you any amount of anything except attraction in this day and age of bodybuilding. He needs to fix that gyno in a huge way. It is extremely distracting. It takes away from anything else that he may have going for him in the front. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Not a bad physique overall. Good detail in the quads, that feathering in the quads. So he's, he's coming in fairly well conditioned. Uh, Leo Ares, EP, you're a nice dude. I appreciate the vibe. Many other channels have an edge to them. Not an issue, but it's nice not hearing constant dunking on the dudes, even if they are acting funny. Yeah, look, I I enjoy the positivity in bodybuilding, but not to say that you still can't uh, you know, have a little bit of fun with it. <laughs> you know, a little bit. I I enjoy this sport, and I just try to live a positive life, to be honest, you know? So I like bringing that positivity, but you also have to be objective in this sport at the same time. So yeah, that's, I mean, look, you guys that follow my channel, you know what I'm all about here. Uh, front guide spread. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it is very distracting. These guys, uh, 
the best thing that William Bonac did was get his gyno fixed before it really became a problem. He even addressed it in, I think it was a victory speech one year. Uh, he, he got it fixed and that was it. But yeah, that's that's got to be fixed. Yeah, front gyno spread. Funny. So like I said, you guys, we did see improved versions of Good Vito, Raphael Brandau, Antonio Burton. The finals are going to be unbelievable. It is going to come down to those uh, to those final comparisons. Black Patron says, uh, Samson still got gyno. It's something that he's going to have to address. He's, he's going to have to address it. I didn't notice it as much on Samson, to be honest. But... That's something that only gets worse over time. You know, that only gets worse. So get it taken care of, and you're good to go. It's very common to get that taken care of these days. It's essential as a pro bodybuilder to have that taken care of. Uh, Davey Attic says, Vita was on. He knew it too. Yeah, he, he does bring the energy in general. But yeah, he knew he was on. Definitely knew. Yeah. Uh, Leo Aris, uh, Kareth at home. Yeah, Kareth is watching from home. Yeah, yeah. Um, hoping that he'll come back on the podcast there tomorrow, actually. Uh, Robin Strand got a hold of me and said that he was thinking about uh, tomorrow as a good possibility for us doing it. I'd like to be able to set up these live streams to get guys like Robin on and Kareth on so that we can all go through the show, you know, as it is live guys let me know if you'd like to see something like that uh, fast time says you still have the same top three after seeing their improvements yeah yeah i don't think i would change it i think since all of them are looking improved that uh it's still going to end up being probably the same but we'll see when they compare we'll see when they compare you guys let me know if you think your top three has changed after seeing these guys at uh at the finals here. JK says, Good Vito future will be a hard one for a lot of pros. Uh, the dude is big with good balance. So far better than Crizzo and Rubiel de Bruz. Yeah, I think the Good Vito is having an excellent pro debut here. And I think that he does bring a level of aesthetics as compared to a mass monster like uh, Rubiel Mascara or Crizzo, which will serve him very well. Yeah, it'll serve him very well. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Brandeo has been acting strange this whole show. Too excited? I don't I don't know. I don't know exactly. Raphael Brandeo has always been a competitor with a certain amount of personality. There's no question there. You know, I think that he has a little bit more confidence than he necessarily should, to be honest with you. But I don't know about this show in particular. Going into the prejudging, I think that he showed the level of confidence that was reminiscent of the physique that he brought. But here, he is much better in finals. So it's not to say that, you know, it's not up in the air when it comes to the top three placings right now. Really not. Uh, why do I have good veto over Raphael? Because of the conditioning factor. I think that after prejudging, that conditioning really cannot be denied. And the fact that Raphael was off in prejudging, I just think that it overtakes the amount of aesthetics that maybe Raphael could have over good veto. That's just how I see it. Uh, Black Patron, he's not better than Crizzo. Um... I'm not sure if you mean Rubiel or otherwise. Or good, or, or you probably mean good Vito. Good Vito is not better than Crizzo. Not at this point. No, definitely not. No. Ah, okay, William Martins is coming out now. Now, this is who I thought would end up taking fourth place here. But I don't know if I'm extremely confident in that after seeing him uh, in prejudging. Hopefully he keeps good control over that midsection. If he can do that, 
then he could probably round out a fourth place finish here. Needs a little bit more rotation on the arms in that front double. He's got really high lat insertions. Good separation in that side leg. Good conditioning from the back. Okay, so he did hit that back lat. I didn't know if he would or not. I think he's got to slow down a little bit in his posing. You know, hit the poses, sink into the poses, really let them sink in. You know, he just went through basically almost all the mandatories there, and now it's, you know, what's it going to be? I think that William Martins looks a lot better on Instagram than he does on stage. And that's not an uncommon thing of competitors out there. Vlad Sukaruchko was the other one I was thinking of earlier in the uh, um, in the prejudging. Uh, Vlad Sukaruchko. He's somebody that looked really good on Instagram and just it doesn't quite translate over to the stage. It actually massively didn't translate over for Vlad Sukaruchko. That fourth competitor, I really do need to find out his name here because it's bothering me because I think that he could take fourth place here. Let's just take a look. I might be able to find it quickly. I might not. Uh, Martin's back is lacking. Got to bring it up. He's got high lat insertions. You know, I, I don't know if there's anything that he could do about that. Uh, no, it would have been, I'm just trying to think of where I saw this guy before. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Okay. I think I found him here. Carlos Andre Atleta, I believe his name is. Uh, Martins didn't seem to put any effort in his posing routine. I think he just, I think he went through the mandatories way too fast, and then he was just kind of walking back and forth from one side of the stage to the other and hit a couple of most musculars, pointing to the crowd. Yeah, that doesn't do it for me. You know, this is the Arnold. This is the Arnold Classic. You got to nail that that posing routine. All right. So we're going to see our first call out. Who's it going to be you guys? Who's it going to be? I'd say we got Raphael, Goodvito, Tonio, or maybe they will go for the second call out first. You never know with these judges when it comes to these callouts. It's very, very hard to tell what way they're going here. But hey, that makes it interesting. That makes it interesting. I don't mind. Uh, I wonder if he was a classic guy who missed weight. <laughs> if he was a classic guy who missed weight, he went way, way over in weight. Way over. <laughs> Can't see it, bro. Can't see it. Uh, Leo Era says, you can't control insertions, but you can control thickness. Martin's back is lacking depth, too. You're right. He can improve it. He can make improvements. But I think overall, you know, it's not going to be substantial improvements. Those lat insertions being what they are, I mean, what are you going to do? Nothing. Uh, James Max says, I th think Kai Green can win the Masters Olympia. One more for the fans. I am not a fan of Kai Green as a competitor. Kai Green had three seasons in a row where he, one, was really leading fans on as to whether or not he was going to compete. It It bothered me. I didn't like it. Anytime he was asked a question about competing, he would give these philosophical, long-winded, drawn-out answers, you know, talking about, 
like Palumbo, I remember asked him in an interview, like, are you going to compete? And just started talking about the universe and everything. I was just like, man, like, yes or no? You know, are you going to do it or not? But, hey, that's that's where I'm at when it comes to Kai. I think he could win the Masters Olympia, though. Yeah, yeah. he's He always looks like he's, like, six weeks out, you know, even for his age. He could win it. Uh, Antonio Montana, I caught your live. Great to be back. Great commentary. Hey, appreciate you being here, bro. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been busy times for me. I was underwater a lot, a lot this last week. A guy I had to fire. Another guy on uh, my main dive team that had pneumonia. So it was it, it was busy. <clears throat> okay, so this is an interesting call out here. We've got Tony O'Burton. Um, this guy, man, I gotta I gotta have his name down. Like it's ridiculous. Carlos Andre. I believe. I'll be able to confirm that here in just a second. William Martin's in the center, so, you know, there's not... Uh, we've got good veto standing next to uh, Raphael Brandel. I won't be surprised if Raphael actually ends up improving here. You know, I won't be surprised at all as he continues to pose. He does look good. Definitely looks better. Definitely looks better. Back double. Yeah, we're still not seeing that separation necessarily from Raphael. Good still needs to pose that better. Tonio, I think, takes it. Yeah, I think that's Tonio's pose all day. Side tricep, I would almost give to uh, to Good Vito, honestly. Abs and thigh, for me, it's Tonio all day long. Most muscular, most muscular is man. It's a really good shot for Good Vito, but Raphael is improved in that shot as well. Tonio, I think, should continue to hit the hands class most muscular and not necessarily the uh, crab most muscular because I think he just looks bigger when he hits that uh, that most muscular in the in the uh, hands class position. Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, we've got a top two comparison here, you guys. We've got a top two between Good Vito and Tony O'Burton right now. They have left Raphael Brandau out of this callout. You can see Tony... Wow. Tony O looks fantastic. Even still, Good Vito, as good of conditioning as he has, Tony O is just so round and bubbly. And he's getting better as he continues to pose. You guys, this is an unexpected callout. Uh, okay, okay. Back double. Oh man, good comparison. I I, I think I'd have to give it to Tonio though. Back lat spread. See, Tonio poses it. His execution is perfect. Good Vito needs to work on that. Side tricep. I think both of them need to work on the execution for that. I think Good Vito needs to worry about himself and stop tapping other competitors. I'd give that to Tonio when it comes to the abs and thigh. Look at the shoulders on Tonio, bro. The shoulders are nuts. But the quad separate, the feathering in the quads from Good Vito. Insane, man. Insane. Okay. So this is this is interesting. This is very interesting. Now we're getting a call out of Good Vito and Raphael. You guys, these are not typical call outs. These are very, very strange callouts in terms of what we typically see from bodybuilding callouts. 
we would have expected a top three call out, moving these guys around maybe once. And that's it. These are very, very interesting call outs. But I really like this. This really does show us how these guys compare because we're only focusing on two here. The conditioning from Brandeo is so much better. Wow. So much better. This is crazy. I really like this. I think Brandeo, look, look at the hamstring separation in Brandeo here. It's he's getting he's getting better. He is he is getting better. He doesn't have the striations in the glutes, and he's posing that much better than good veto, so I would probably give him the win there in in the back lat spread. Side tricep. Nah, don't hit a front tricep. That doesn't fare well. You can't you can't do that. Um, Tyler Manion made it very clear after the Texas Pro that it has to be a side tricep. Looks like Brandeo's maybe getting a little little gassed here, you guys. He's not holding those poses at all. The last two. All right, he did hold that most muscular. We'll get. No, look, he is. He's 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 getting winded. Le leave leave him. I want to see him left out. Look, Brandeo is getting gassed, you guys, and they're keeping him out with Tonio. They're keeping him out with Tonio. This is what separates the men from the boys when it comes to bodybuilding, you guys. Can you handle the multiple rounds of posing? Do you have that endurance? And as of right now, Brandeo is gassed. He is gassed. But, he is improving. He is improving as he poses. Tonio looks good though, man. He really does. Okay, okay. I'll say Brand Brandale's, he, although he is tired, although he is tired, he's, he's still holding his own. Man, that back shot from Tonio was just crazy, man. Just crazy. Uh, Tonio doesn't work with Chris Cormier, no. Tonio works with KJ Center Stage for posing, and Justin Jacoby is his coach. Let's see the abs and thigh. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That midsection Antonio is dialed in, bro. That's where you see Dexter Jackson. That's where you see it. Most muscular. Look at the way Tonio just got into that pose, man. He literally looked like he morphed as he shrugged his shoulders forward. He just looks massive, dude. And the separation... Awesome. Yeah, Brandeo could not get back to that line fast enough. Brandeo is gassed, dude. Let's do, let's do a top three. Let's see it. All right, they're not going to do it. Interesting callouts, you guys. One of the most interesting callouts that I've seen in all of open bodybuilding shows in quite some time. That is not common to see things like that. This makes it very, very unpredictable when it comes to the placings as to where the judges currently have these guys. Very unpredictable. But we also get, like I said, a much clearer prediction, or not, not prediction, we get a much clearer comparison between these guys as for the fact that we just had two of them out there. Unbelievable. I really enjoyed that, actually. Now, as for who I still have where, well, you know what? You guys let me know in the comments. We're going to be coming up to the awards here soon, you guys. It's not going to take long. Get me in your predictions. Let's see it in the comments. Where do you guys have these guys placing? Let's see it. Let's see it. Why'd they turn the lights off? Yeah, it's not very well lit at the front of the stage there. I'll say that. Man, what a battle. What a battle. Really awesome callouts. I really enjoyed that. I know you guys did too.
I know you guys love that. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, let's see what you guys got. Davey Attic says, Tony Oviedo, then Raphael. Raphael, Tony Oviedo. Rafa, Tony Oviedo. Okay, okay. Tony o, Raphael, Vito. See, this is what I'm saying. It's all over the place. It's, it's, it's fairly unpredictable here, you know? This is really, really interesting. But I will say, I'm still going to stick with Tony Owen first. Uh, I still want to put good Vito in second because you still have to consider prejudging, right? That does still count. And Raphael was often prejudging. We saw it when it came to Akeem Williams from the prejudging at the Arnold Ohio to the finals. He was so much improved that he was easily a top four guy at the finals at the Arnold Ohio. But you could not deny the prejudging look, which is why he dropped down in the placings. Here, Tonio was improved in finals, Raphael was improved in finals, and Good Vito was improved in finals. So, this is going to be interesting. Oh, they got Flex Lewis giving out an award here, you guys. We did see Flex Lewis training a bit with Raphael Brandel. We know that they're uh, that they're friends as well. But yeah, predictions are all over the place. All. Over. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Brandeo in this show. I, I really don't. Um, he's a guy that I didn't typically see get gassed when it came to posing. You know, previously. Let's beat an egg on the head. Yeah, I know. We we really, really just want to get to the uh, to the awards here. But, you know, Flex Lewis is a legend. He deserves to say a few words. Uh, a few words, rather. But, yeah, let's let's get to it here. You know, let's get to it. Uh, Antonio, uh, Antonio Montana says, uh, Antonio is more impressive. Rafa has the perfect physique, but who wins? I think from the back, Antonio has the perfect physique. You know, flow, conditioning, all those things, I think that Antonio does. I think in the abs and thigh, Antonio was much better. So the front shots, I think that Raphael is more aesthetically pleasing. But I think the Tonio just had so much roundness, fullness, conditioning overall. I'm still going to give it to Tonio. I am questioning more between second and third. Between Good Vito and... Uh, between Good Vito and Raphael. I, maybe Raphael can take him now. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know. I am going to put Tony Owen first, though. I do need to decide before they give out the awards. I'm going to... St it's a tough call. It's a tough call. It's going to be so close on the scorecards. It's going to be so close. Raphael killed it for me with the crying and huffing and puffing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, Andre Andre Carlo is the, this this guy's name is is Andre Carlo. And yeah, he showed up. He looked really good. Why are all these guys crying? <laughs> like, I get I get it. The the time that you put in, the uh, the energy, the 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 passion, it is definitely an emotional experience. I don't want to I don't want to downplay too much on this, you guys. I don't. But uh, it just seems like everybody's crying, man. I don't know. Regardless of that, Andre Carlo showed up with a very, very impressive physique. And I think that he's going to be someone to watch out for. Third place goes to Good Vito. Okay. Okay. They're going through these awards pretty quick. Good Vito takes third place in his pro debut, you guys. I potentially would have had him in second. Well, I did have him in second. Okay. Okay. Now, here it comes. Here it comes, you guys. Who's going to take home the win? Who's going to take home the win? 
They're going to give it to the hometown boy, or they're going to show they're going to give it to the best version of Tony O'Burton that we've ever seen. Let's see it. Let's see it. Tony O'Burton takes second place. Tony O'Burton takes second place at the Arnold Classic South America. Okay. Okay. We have Rafael Brandau, who is going to take home the win here at the Arnold Classic South America. Well, I think after what we saw from Raphael in prejudging, that he was not worthy of winning this show. I think that Tony O'Burton was worthy of winning in this show. And I am definitely a little bit surprised. I'm 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 surprised here. This is definitely a controversial decision. It was going to be close against these guys no matter what. But I really don't think the version of Raphael Brando that we saw at prejudging was deserving of the win here regardless of the improvements that he made here at the finals. Because all three of these guys in the top three were improved. Even Tonio was improved. This is a controversial decision. This is this is controversial. And I can see you guys in the comments thinking the same thing, a lot of you. Even Krishan at Goat Fitness says, wow. Yeah, there's there's some surprises. There's some, there's, there's some surprises here. Okay. But Tonio is a true competitor. He is a humble competitor. Tonio will take his second place. He will continue to compete and he will take his Olympia qualification with this season. Rafael Brandel has won based on his improvements, I think, from prejudging to finals. He has won based on his amount of aesthetics. And I think that that is probably why he won the show here. Going to the comments here, Rafael Newtonio was better than him. What bias is this? Well, I'm not really, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Davey Attic says, I call shenanigans. There's uh, there's potential there. Politics at its best is what Ray Ferguson says. Uh, James Max says, just wow, need whiskey. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Antonio Montana says, Rafa is going to style and profile out of there. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah, for sure he is now. Tonio can go mess up the Detroit Pro, in my opinion. Yeah, and you might see Tonio end up doing that. A lot of you guys are saying Tonio should go to Detroit. Maybe he should. Yeah, maybe he should. Uh, Leo Ayres says, Raphael won on his blood, sweat, and especially tears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's not crying now. We'll give him that. Yeah, we'll give him that. Uh, Mr. Manuel, imagine not winning in his own country. Rough decision. I think that there should be at least enough integrity in bodybuilding to not let the the hometown guy win when he showed up like he did in prejudging, honestly. Yeah, I am definitely surprised at this decision. It was close. I will not deny that. It was close. 
but I still think that Tony took him. I still think Tony took him. And I think it's probably a one-point decision between all three of these guys in the top three. Uh, Ni Nerku says Tonio won. Yep. Yep, I agree. Antonio Montana, Tonio is going to kill it at the Olympia. Yeah, he will. Tonio tends to get pretty fired up when things like this happen. He just uses it. You know, he uses it as fire. And he'll continue to come back better. Uh, Black Patron says, so much nonsense, guys. He was better just because he's not the most improved guy. He's still on another level compared to the other two. Aesthetics-wise, Raphael does have great aesthetics. You know, he does. Um, but that's not the only thing that matters. I don't think that he brought the conditioning and prejudging especially. He was soft as hell in the hamstrings and the glutes. Just unbelievable. I think this is definitely a controversial decision. I, I do. He was better in finals, no question. And I will go as far to say that he was maybe even better in terms of improvements from prejudging to finals than Tonio was. But I still don't think it's enough. That's just me. Uh, all in all, great show and not as controversial as Derek versus Adi. No, no. Not as controversial as that. But it was a great show. A very exciting show. Especially the way they did the callouts there for the finals. I had no idea which way it was going to go. Oh, OC Jekwam. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. Uh, do you know where the judges are from? No, I don't. I actually don't. I don't know who's judging this show. Um, I'm assuming that Tarek El Gindi is probably a judge here. You know, that's my that's my fair assumption. Uh, but no, where else the judges are from? No, that's not information that we typically get. Not readily available information, anyway. Uh, Ray Ferguson says, "I want to see the scorecard." Yeah, me too. Me too. <clears throat> Connie Alvarez says, "I told you guys this was going to happen. Bust my chops now. Not going to bust your chops, bro. But uh, controversial." Definitely controversial. We will say that. Black Patron says, close, sure, but you're all talking as if you shouldn't have won. I just disagree. And that's fair. You know, I uh, I respect that. I still saw him as the winner. I did not see him as the winner after what we saw in prejudging. I think that at finals, if he had have showed up that same way at prejudging, then yes, there would be more of an argument for Raphael actually taking home the win here. But I do not think that he should have won based on what we saw prejudging. He was off. There's no question he was off. And good veto was conditioned. Antonio was on. But like I said, in fairness, the improvements that Raphael made from prejudging to finals probably were the most substantial. I will say that. Was he good enough to win? Clearly someone thought so. Maybe, uh, JK says, maybe some other competitors should gas out in order to win shows. <laughs> and gas out and cry. Oh, man. Raphael was gassed. He, but, like I said, he did still pretty much hold his own, you know, against Tonio in the finals there. So, final thoughts. Final thoughts from you guys. Let's hear it. Let's hear some final thoughts. We've got a lot, uh, got a lot of final thoughts out there now. I think that the call-outs were very interesting, like I said, for the finals. Very interesting. I was not expecting that. We did not see a top three comparison. We simply saw a top two between uh, Tonio and Raphael, and then between uh, Tonio, Goodvito, Goodvito, and uh, and Raphael. Interesting. Very. It made it for it made for an interesting show. That's for sure. Uh, Antonio Montana says, Aesthetics seem to be used a lot to justify positions lately. They seem to want better-looking physiques at the Olympia. Well, of course. Of course. The uh, After the whole bubblegut thing went on there for a number of years, yeah, they don't they don't want that anymore. They, they don't. And that's the end of the live stream. There you go. Rafa is good for business. Well, we've seen uh, instances like that in the past as well. As a potential. 
Uh, Tonio and Vio made it through all the posing without huffing and puffing and crying. Well, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, they did. No, that's uh, that's interesting. Anyway, so there you have it, you guys. That's it. That is the 2024 Arnold Classic uh, South America. We have Raphael taking home first place. We have Tony O'Burton in second. Good Vito takes home first place. And uh, Andre Carlos takes home fourth. You know, uh, unexpected, unexpected uh, competitor there. I'm going to watch out for him in the future. Uh, William Martins takes fifth in this lineup. So let's see what Goat, Ivan, and Marks have to say. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna get a hold of these guys. Well, uh, even I don't speak to, but uh, I'm going to talk to Krishan and Marks, see what they think. I'll be watching their videos as well. Um, I'm going to sleep on it. I'll give another idea of what I think about it there tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at. But listen, at the end of the day, you guys, this was a fantastic live stream. I really appreciate all you guys being here in the comments section. Thank you very much. For those of you that are new here, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that you can get all of my bodybuilding coverage for the entire 2024 season and beyond moving forward. News videos, podcasts with all the top athletes of the sport, live streams for the competitions, other insight. Follow me on Instagram. I'll give you guys some insight there as well. I really appreciate all you guys being here. Thank you very much. It's been it's been fantastic covering this show with you guys here with me. I, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, Martins was fourth. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. William Martins takes fourth place and uh, Andre Carlos took fifth. So yeah, even still, you know, fantastic, fantastic showing. I may have had Andre Carlos swap places with him, but that's, that's okay. Uh, Davey Attic says, I don't know. I'm just confused. And I understand. Yeah. I, uh, like I said, I'm going to sleep on this one. I'm going to watch some more of the HD footage and um, I'll give another, I'll give another consideration on it there tomorrow morning uh, when I do a video. I'll, uh, I'll see you about a little bit of a rundown. Uh, Antonio, uh, Antonio Montana Vito had shredded quads with striations. Yeah, he did. Vito was unbelievable. And that's a really good takeaway from this was we saw a fantastic pro debut from good Vito. He was great. He was great. He nailed the conditioning. He definitely is not an Instagram bodybuilder. And he is going to be very dangerous moving forward in this 2024 season. 2025 especially once we see some improvements. So that's going to do it, you guys, for me in this live stream. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. We will be back with regular news updates here moving forward. Make sure to like and subscribe. Like I said, hit that notification bell so you get all the updates from here, uh, from me here on EP09 Bodybuilding. And again, thank you very much, you guys. Let's continue this conversation. Hit me up on Instagram. You know, I'll be kicking around there. And uh, make sure you tune in for the video tomorrow. Uh, Davey Attic says it's shocking, shocking that Vito just made his uh, pro debut when he looked that good. I agree. He really did. He really did. JK, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate you being here. I'm glad you love the channel. Let's, uh, let's keep it going, guys. Let's keep this channel growing. You know, I'm going to keep up the coverage. You'll get all the latest news updates and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to do it. So I'm going to end it here. You guys, 